Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Community Fortress. This is Wave Knife, which is a really good name, and it was sent in by Equinox Fox. Now, this one, um, I don't normally do this, but I'm actually going to use a little bit of footage from a video that they submitted just so you can see the top. Uh, this is uh, actually sitting in Stone Sense, which is a DF hack utility, and I'm only using like the first five seconds or so because the top of this fortress makes a lot more sense uh, when you see it in this view instead of the actual fortress itself. So this fortress is a very, very small fortress, and if you'd like to send in a fortress for me to have a look at on this show. You can do that on my Discord in the DF save sharing room. Just kind of look at what other people are doing. And if you're using modded saves, please include your mods folder. Just a copy of it in the zip folder. So I actually have a decent chance of loading it. Um, up here uh, on the top side we have what you just saw, which is kind of that mural of a dwarf on the side of the walls. I, you know, I'm always kind of impressed when people put the time into doing stuff like this because I personally don't use Stone Sense for anything. I, I, I don't use DF Hack when I'm normally playing, and so the result of this is I don't see um, <clears throat> that kind of the game in that perspective because I, I like to kind of imagine it from a kind of a top-down perspective. It just it works better for me that way. But um, it really allows you to do some kind of cool pixel art and stuff with the surface forts like this in this kind of format uh, in these very, 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 very small embarks. Now, these very small embarks require some interesting uh, creativity as you have to essentially build all the way to the edge of the map and uh, you're going to be kind of limited with some things that you can do. But uh, we have this kind of box set up here and in this box setup we have, you know, kind of uh, the, the, the animals and this is where enemies are going to spawn and obviously they can't climb up and over these walls because it's so steep. And then as we move down, we move into the underground area. We've got some smelters. Uh, we've got a very large farm plot area. I think it's just one. Yeah, very large farm plot. And I have hiccups, apparently. I'm sorry. Uh, and then down here, we kind of get into kind of the beginning of the, the neatness of this style of fort building. So these are, you know, just in your bedrooms and in the center, we have a dining hall uh, with various different types of tables. And, you know, it's got, it's got a nice kind of carved out pattern to it. And as we go down, uh, there's some barracks and some temples around the edges, which could use some work, in my opinion. And then down here, we have this thing uh, where there's just stuff kind of dead everywhere uh, and a few dead dwarves, which is... Um, you know, it's it's seen better days, shall we say? And uh, as we go down, and as as they say in their description, uh, it's spiraled too far uh, into the descent of destruction. So I'm I'm expecting to see a lot of violence in this fort. Uh, one of the challenges of building a fort like this is because enemies do kind of just spawn right on top of you. Uh, you're kind of forced to just keep all of the dwarves inside. Now this floor is very much a mess. Oh my god, it's kind of just like a little bit of everything. Is this really just like an everything stockpile? No, it's a custom stockpile. So what's in this? Basically everything except for corpses and refuse. Good. I was going to point out that if you actually have refuse allowed on a stockpile items degrade significantly significantly faster it's a hard thing to say um and as we move down we move down we move down wow all of these layers are just like everything that is crazy the pixel art at the top is really cool but things just kind of go, go a little nuts as we go down and then over here in the corner it kind of goes through i'm wondering when we're going to start hitting cavern layers it seems like there's definitely been some car carnage down here here we go and then same thing for cavern layers so when stuff shows up it's just right on top of you immediately as you can see there's a you know bits of forgotten beasts here several bits of forgotten beasts we've got even more bits of forgotten beasts and these can this can get really intense in these very small embarks if you're not careful we have a little tunnel going down to the next cavern layer uh which we can see more vomit and bodies in the corners there oh my god this fortress is, fortress is in a rough state. This is a really, really long cave going down to the next cavern layer. Damn. All right, there we go. Oh, pff, that's, there's so much miasma. They're trying to block off the side here from, from the looks of things. Yep. Trying to block off the side, trying to anything to seal off the caverns. Oh, there's so many bodies. So many crundles. Is that a dead cat? That's a dead kitten. How sad. Continue moving down. The pixel art at the top is great. I don't really have too much feedback. I personally would not run a fort with such so many large everything stockpiles. If when I, on the rare occasion when I build forts like this, I really don't like to. Um, on the rare occasion, if I build forts like this, I try and do things as minimally as possible. Completely build out one layer, move down one layer. Completely build out one layer, move down one layer. Completely build out one layer, move down one layer. P completely build out one layer, move down one layer. As we move down, you can just see more and more of that carnage. And then... Waiting for the magma sea. Oh, I, I, this is probably the magma sea down here. There's even more blood down here. Look at all the... Oh, wow. Just so many magma crabs. So pro tip about magma crabs. Um, they can't swim through like a closed grate. So what I would do if you're trying to, you know, make a magma reservoir or something, I would make a little reservoir over here. 
uh, put a floodgate like right here, and then a layer above channel down one so that it can flow through, just as long as it's made out of magma safe materials, like glass or iron or steel or um, any of the magma safe stones. Same with the mechanisms. So if you say make gabbro or metal mechanisms, um, then if they when they flow through, um, you can just close it. And then you, instead of having just like these open like risks here where magma crabs can just climb through, you, you'll actually have safer setups. Of course, like, you know, you'll restrict some fun there, but that's up to you, of course. And then down here is the fun spire. And then down at the bottom is a magma forge. Yeah, overall, I, I would say that this is um, kind of a <laughs> bit of a, a sad fort, uh, but it, it's always fun to look at something a little bit different because I don't really build forts like this. I really should. I, you know, at some point I should just say screw it and do a fort like this, but I got a few other ideas for things that I would like to try and tackle first before I uh, make a, a micro fort like this because I, I've they're interesting challenges, but it's not generally a challenge that I enjoy. Um, but, uh, well done on the, on the pixel art up here at the top and, uh, the carnage towards the bottom is something. So if we, uh, take a peek at these, we can see that this is a, a memorial to Doren. Uh, we have a, a memorial to Adil, which is a finely, uh, crafted orthoclase memorial to Adil. Uh, the slab reads in memory of Adil, bled to death, slain by the magma crab, genius tundra in the year 46, lover of maces. What a sad tale. How about this one down here? The microcline statue of Thob. Uh, the slab reads in memory of Thob. Struck down by the forgotten beast Sota. Uh, Muscus shaft. Muscus shaft. Ugh, the faded. In the rampage of the forgotten beast Sota. Muscus shaft. Uh, in the gear of meeting. The, sla the slayer of Eurus equal roughness. Well, that is something. <laughs> Uh, that is something. So it's such a sad story that this fortress must have gone through to fall so hard. But at the same time, looks like they had a lot of fun here. Uh, this is a superior quality orthoclase memorial to Vakar. The slab reads, in memory of Vakar, struck down by the goblin Istu, uh, cold curses with a copper bow uh, in Stok um the squeezing attack in the year 43. Well, it was a couple of years ago now. We're into year 47. I wonder what year this fortress started in. Cool little fort. Uh, it's always nice to see something that I wouldn't build myself. And uh, good job on the pixel art at the top. Uh, it's a shame that the fortress fell. But um, based on this overworld, like, you definitely have plenty of opportunities to have some vengeance, which is what I would do. I'd retire this fortress or abandon it and go have some vengeance against those goblins. Uh, and then let the deaths of these dwarves not be something in vain. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you if you enjoy this series and you enjoy seeing uh, various community forts on this channel, check out this playlist. It's a, it's a rapidly growing playlist. And if you'd like to support this channel directly, you can join my patrons. Lists are on the screen here, or you can jump into one of my live streams at twitch.tv slash blindirl. When this goes up, I might be doing a uh, subathon, so it might be a good time to swing by and say hello. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.